photographs and film taken the day President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Did a conspiracy cause the death of President Kennedy? To determine this issue, let's begin first by examining a diagram of Dealey Plaza. To begin, to, be, to begin with, Dealey Plaza is not a large place. To give you an idea of the plaza's size, if you should visit Dealey Plaza in Dallas, it is much smaller than what you would think. From the crosswalk at Houston and Elm to the triple underpass, the distance is only 100 yards. What I would like to do briefly at this point is explain where I believe sh six shots came from. This will be a, a brief explanation at this point. I believe the first shot occurred at, at frame Z189. Throughout this pr presentation, I will be using a numbers from 0 to 486. These are the numbers of the Zapruder film. I believe the first shot came from Z189 for several reasons. One reason being that Secret Service agent Warren Taylor heard a shot from that location. He, along with several other ear witnesses, believed the first shot came from the second floor of the Dow Tech building, or to be exact, the Dallas Uranium and Oil Company. The second shot, I believe, occurred at frame Z206. The reason for this will be explained in more depth later on, but at this point, I am saying that the shot came from under the triple underpass. It transited through the presidential windshield on a limousine and hit the president in the throat. The next shot, I believe, occurred at frame 224, and this shot only struck Governor Conley. This can, this can be seen in the Zapruder frames between frame 224 and 225. What you will see in a high quality frames of these, uh, high quality of these two frames, you will see Conley's right lapel flip back and forth from the bullet transiting through his chest. I believe this shot came from the sniper on the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. The next shot, the fourth shot, I believe occurred at frame Z295. This shot, I believe, struck both the President and Governor Conley. I believe the this shot hit the president or struck the president in the rear of the head, transited, striking uh, Governor Conley's right wrist and ending up in his right thigh. I'm sorry, left thigh. This will be explained a little bit more in detail. The next shot, I believe, was what is referred to as the fatal head shot. I believe both the 295 and 313 shot were both fatal head shots, although the 313 head shot is clearly seen in the Zapruder film. I believe the 313 shot was fired from by Secret Service agent William Robert Greer from the front seat of the presidential limousine. I will explain this in more detail later. The next shot, or last shot, I believe occurred at frame 330. I believe this shot had missed all the occupants in the car and had struck the chrome strip on top of the uh, windshield in between the two visors. This, can, this will be shown, uh, proof of this will be shown later on. Let's go on at this point. The Bexner photograph. This photograph was taken just prior to the first shot. The timing on this shot is frame Z186. What we want to do at this point is pay attention to the position of President Kennedy. At this point, President Kennedy is looking 
over towards the grassy knoll. He is waving at this point and is just approaching the Stemmons Road sign. This, this is just prior to him receiving the first shot in the back at Z189. What I would like to call your attention to is the agents in the Queen Mary. Notice that they are acting normally, uh, looking uh, for the, uh, apparent danger. Uh, no apparent uh, motion of any uh, alarm is given at that point. Now let's move on uh, and look up at the grassy knoll. What I would like to call your attention to at this point here, what you are seeing is a person called the Black Dog Man. Uh, Robert Gordon and several other critics believe this was the, a sniper on the grassy knoll. I do not believe to be the case, this to be the case. Another person that can be barely seen to his, to our right, is a, a person by the name of Gordon Arnold. Arnold was a 22-year-old soldier on leave at that point. He had taken his mother's camera to Dealey Plaza and was photographing a uh, film at that point. Uh, after the assassination, uh, his film was confiscated. Also notice on the, on the small concrete retainer here, on top of that is um, Abraham Zapruder and his secretary, Mary Setzman. At this point, Zapruder is taking his famous Zapruder film. This is Philip Willis's fifth photograph. Uh, Philip Willis said that when he heard the first shot hit the president, he took this photograph. So I believe at this point the president has just been struck in the back. I believe the, the location of the shot, as I said earlier, came from the Dow Tech building. And what happened was the bullet entered uh, the president's back about the uh, T3 area about one and a half inches over to the right. Now what's interesting about this, although you can't uh, quite see what I want to show you, is that there's a cushion that I will show you has a bullet hole in the front. I will, I will show that the, uh, the, the shot that hit Kennedy at this point first transited through a cushion which slowed the bullet down. I believe this is why the bullet did not transit from President Kennedy. Also, I want to direct your attention to the people under uh, the uh, Stemmons road sign. Uh, I believe there to be two conspirators in this film. The one man, I believe, is the Umbrella Man and the reason I believe he is involved in the crime was he would raise his umbrella and turn it clockwise. He would pump the umbrella and you can see this in various film. The other one is a, a person later dubbed as the Cuban. This is the Cuban here. Uh, as, he, as the president approaches into the killing zone, the Cuban raises his hand and keeps it, keep, and keeps it raised. I believe that it was his job to make sure that the uh, president was taken out and he had a, a good view of, of, of looking into the limousine and unfortunately his hand was raised throughout uh, most of the uh, killing sequence or the shot sequence of the president. So let's move on. This is the James Algen photograph 255. What I want to show to you is the location of where I believe the sniper was who fired the Z-189 shot. From ear witness testimony, several people, people believe that the shot came from this location. I believe this to be the case. Also, I would like to bring up these women, young women here, looking out the window. I will go into more detail later on about this. At any rate, as I said earlier, the first shot occurred at Z189 and transited through the presidential uh, cushion. This is the rear seat of the presidential limousine. This photograph was, this bloody photograph was taken 
the night of the assassination in the White House garage. What I want to bring your attention to is what I believe to be where a bullet hole occurred. What I At this point right here, I believe that is a bullet hole. The bullet hole that transited uh, through the rear cushion, striking the president in the back. I had talked to uh, Bill Hess. Bill Hess was the uh, builder, or had built the car and rebuilt the car. He, he was from Hess and Eisenhart in Cincinnati. In 1992, I had a long conversation with Bill Hess. He had mentioned several things to me. What was interesting was the day before uh, in San Antonio, the presidential limousine was used in San Antonio and also in Dallas. On the, on the day prior, the, the cushion that was, the, the cushion was not the same as the one used, they used the day of the assassination. The way I could prove this was, is because there was cording, a cording trim in the area of where the bullet hole was. This can readily be seen in the film if you examine it closely. So someone, the night of the assassination, when the, the limousine was flown to Love Field, had replaced the seat. I find this very interesting. This seat became Commission Exhibit 353, which I explained, and it was never placed back into, into the car. When the limousine was flown to Cincinnati, I'm sorry, driven to Cincinnati, Ohio, the, the cushion in the rear of the car, which I talked to Bill Hess, had the cording on that. So that was a different seat. So this, this seat had been gotten rid of. I had ran down the seat a little bit farther to find out what happened to it. Currently, there is a person from Baltimore, Maryland named Robert White who has sections of this cushion. He does not have this section of the bullet hole. I believe this is very incriminating evidence and I believe that you know the bullet transiting through the cushion, slowed down the, the shot enough so the bullet that struck the president in the back did not transit from the president. This is frame Z189 taken of the Zapruder film. Notice Willis, Phil Willis at this point here, just taking the photograph that we've seen previously. What I want to bring your attention to is President Kennedy. Notice that President Kennedy at this point is waving to the crowd. He has just been struck at this point. In the next several frames, which we will see later in the uh, Zapruder film when I show it, but for right now, notice the, the position of um, President Kennedy. He, at this time, he is waving to the crowd. He is looking over towards the grassy knoll. Also, notice Governor Conley's position. Although it is not as clear as Kennedy, what you will see, what you can see is uh, Conley is also looking over at the knoll at this point. Again, the president, I believe, has just been shot at this point. Let's go on to the second shot. I believe. This photograph represents where the presidential limousine was on Elm Street, or the approximate position, when President Kennedy received the shot at frame Z206. I believe this shot came from underneath the triple underpass, transited through the presidential windshield, just to the left of uh, William Robert Greer, the driver, and entered Kennedy's throat. What we're seeing in this slide is I believe is the location of where the sniper fired the Z206 shot. I'm saying the shot came from this area. What, what this is, these are pillars uh, on the inside on Commerce Street and behind them is a walkway that, that 
that uh, you can uh, go across the bridge or under the bridge to the other side. I believe this is an excellent location and after checking out the the different angles and ballistics of the shots I believe it is quite feasible that the shot was fired from this location. If one would look out of the sniper's lair between the pillars this would be the view. Interestingly at this point here uh, James Tagg was hit by a fragment from one of the shots he was standing at that location during the assassination. I believe this is the view that if you look directly out from behind the pillar, this is what you believe the weapon used under the triple underpass was a special 74 Winchester. This was modified and had a silencer. What I found most interesting about this location was directly to the sniper's right was an electrical box at the very corner on Commerce Street. What, that is what you're seeing in this photograph. It could have been very easy for a sniper using a weapon after firing it to store it in this box and then just walk away and go back into Dealey Plaza or go the other way and just escape at this point. Um, what I had said was I believed that the shot that struck the president in the throat was fired at frame 206. What I, I would rather explain this a little bit more. The reason for saying this can be found in these pan frames. From the Zapruder film had a wet splice at frame Z208 and uh, 212. If you can obtain the, the four missing frames, you will notice in frame 209 that the film is blurred. What I am saying at this point is because of the blurring of the film, I believe the shot, I use the term 206, but it may have been 208 to be exact, but somewhere in between frame 207 and 212, the first shot would occurred. Now, the problem is on this, at frame 200, the presidential limousine uh, where the bullet hole appears in the, in the front windshield of the limousine cannot be seen after frame 200. So you have to wait till the limousine passes from behind the Stemmons Road sign. Incidentally, these films are reverse films of the Zapruder film. At any rate, the earliest the bullet hole can be seen is at frame Z218. The bullet hole can be seen at that point and can be continuously seen in, in, at random frames throughout the film, but because of the angle of the windshield to Zapruder's camera, you can see the bullet hole in some frames and other frames you, you can't. In frame 222, the bullet hole is quite clear, and again in frame 218, the bullet hole is clear as the um, limousine passes from behind the Stemmons. What we are looking at is frame 227. What is interesting at this point, if you remember in frame 189, President Kennedy was looking towards the grassy knoll. At this time, Kennedy has been struck once in the back at 189, which caused his right arm to lower to his chin as we are seeing here and and what we're seeing here is notice the uh, bullet hole though this is 227 the bullet hole can be seen in this frame and it has gone through the windshield and struck the president in the throat notice Kennedy's left <coughs> hand raising towards his throat at this time what he is trying to do is cough he has to <coughs> cough first before he can breathe and this is what you're saying so in other words at, he is turning to the front and trying to cough at this point now let's move on to Governor Conley at this point 
Gov Governor Conley has been hit at frame 224. This was proven by the, his coat lapel flapping between 224 and 225. Although it is not, uh, I do not have the quality film to see this, it did happen. At any rate, what we want to draw our attention to at this point is what uh, Governor Conley is holding his sets in hand with his right and left hand at this time, and then when he was struck at frame 224, the bullet, had, you know, in other words, the bullet had entered his back, it was fired from the sixth floor of the school book depository, entered his back at a 26 degree downward angle and a 12 degree side to side angle. The bullet did not hit his wrist. And you can see this, or in the next frame, more clear, that he is holding, still holding his Stetson hat. He has been hit, and at this point, his right hand is flipping up in the air while he is holding his hat. Another indication of shots being fired at this time is if we look at this person here in the background, I, I uh, call this person, this black man, the apron man because he's wearing an apron and what he is doing at this point, he is clapping. So at this point, this is frame 227 and at 224, what he does is when there have been three shots fired, but at this point he stops clapping and swings his hands downward in a clockward, clockwise motion. You'll see this in, later on in the Zapruder film. So at this point, what we are seeing is Kennedy was struck once in the back, once in the throat, Conley's hit in the uh, back, it trances through his chest, and by the way, I talked to uh, Bill Hess, and Bill Hess said that the that there was a bullet found in the and, and the floorboard directly in front of the jump seat in which uh, Governor uh, Conley was hit. Now notice also that the Secret Service agent riding shotgun in the front seat is looking in the rear view mirror. Now it was his job to protect the President and throughout this time period from 133 all the way up to 227 uh, Roy Kellerman is the agent's name. He is looking in the rearview mirror. It's his job to protect the president, and yet he is doing nothing. And it is quite clear that he has observed observed both the governor and the president being shot at this point. This is frame 230 of the Zapruder film. Notice uh, there is more clarity in this photograph. Notice the bullet hole here, as is quite obvious, has, has penetrated the windshield. Notice again uh, Kennedy reacting to the back and throat shot. He's feeling the uh, full effects of them at this point. He's trying to cough. Also notice clearly that this is Governor Hanley, excuse me, Governor Conley's right hand, and he's still holding his Stetson hat, which would be impossible if the uh, single bullet theory was true because the the bullet transited through his w right radius bone and it broke the entire bone so it would be impossible for him to hold the hat at that point. Again, notice Roy Kellerman looking directly into the rearview mirror observing both uh, Kennedy and Conley being struck and doing nothing and also notice that the Cuban who I mentioned earlier has his raised, hand raised at this point, and I believe this is this is an, he what he is doing at this point is making sure that the snipers continue finishing. This is James Algin's 255 photograph. What uh, what I want to draw your attention to is the people inside the presidential limousine at this point. Three shots have been fired. Notice the bullet hole is very clear in this photograph. In other words, the bullet had, uh, I believe, it transited through the windshield at that point, striking the uh, president in the throat. Uh, I have confirmation of this through Dr. Robert Livingston. Uh, Dr. Livingston was a physician at Parkland Hospital who treated uh, President Kennedy the night of the assassination. The interesting thing about a throat wound 
to the trach is that when you have a trach injury you have to cough. Uh, many people thought because the president's arms are raised as they are in this photograph that he had a spinal injury which was called the third born position. This is not true. The bullet did not strike the president in the back. What he is doing is he is coughing at this point. It is not because of a spinal injury. This has confused uh, many people. Also notice at this point that uh, Governor Conley, after being struck, heard, uh, first of all, he heard the noise, and then as he was turning to his right, he was struck at frame 224. He continues to look back towards the president and is doing so at this point. No, so what we are seeing at this point is that uh, President Kennedy, Kennedy is again shot twice, once in the back, once in the throat. The bullet it, it transited through the windshield and it slowed down at this point. Notice the spiral nebula. You can actually see the, uh, the entrance hole of the bullet. The bullet uh, struck his throat and then the governor is, has been shot at this point and is turning around to get a better view at the president. What is interesting about this, if we look closer at this, in this photograph, is what we are seeing here. This is Jacqueline Kennedy's hand reaching towards her husband's uh, arm for, to help him, to assist him. Uh, what's key about this is if we look at the driver and the Warren Commission testimony, he said at this point that he had turned around saw that both the governor and the president had been shot, he turned around and stepped immediately on the accelerator and took off. This is not true. At, from the first shot at frame Z189 and, and to frame uh, Z225, uh, three seconds have passed. Uh, what we are looking at, if we look closely, is this is uh, Kellerman's ear, I'm sorry, this is William Roberts' rear ear as he's turned around. This is an envelope in his pocket. So what he is doing, he's turned directly around looking at the president. Now, in testimony before the Warren Commission, Greer said that he only turned around once. This is not true. When we examine the Zapruder film later on, another footage film, it'll be proven that that William Robert Greer turned around twice not once so he lied he said that he took off at this point and yet in truth he waited a full five more seconds before reacting at all